Hey, 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 welcome to another Valley Forged Beach Edition again. <laughs> well, I did this on purpose this time uh, because of the subject matter. I'll be putting in clips here and there and showing you what I'm talking about. But uh, uh, today we're talking about CO2 or diode lasers, which one is right for you. And uh, for that, I decided to come to the beach. Uh, it's crazy enough, it's a good idea. <laughs> so uh, I will be putting in clips and pictures and things like that in the video so you can uh, get an idea of the things I'm talking about because I've owned pretty much everything I'm talking about here today. Um, backstory quick, I do uh, run a full-time laser business, all I do. Uh, I've had everywhere from a 5.5 watt diode to using two 150 watt CO2 lasers <laughs> and everything in between. So I've got a lot of experience in these different lasers and I'm going to try to give you the best advice I can. Now nobody's perfect and uh, again you got to do lots of research and uh, this is a good place to start. Now, if your question is, what is the difference between a CO2 laser and a diode laser? Well, I have many videos. Um, just put CO2 versus diode laser. You'll probably find my videos, quite a few of them. And we'll be explaining that subject. But this one in particular is um, more, what should you get? Uh, for where you at you're at on your journey and I'm just going to help you like think of different reasons why you would go with one over the other very easy to make an emotional decision when it comes to buying a laser uh, I've done this many many times myself and probably will do it again at some point um, I think the issue is that's just how we operate a lot of times, right? Uh, so, just moving my stuff, so in case the waves decide to come up. <laughs> um, all right, so I bought an Ortur Laser Master 3. Why? Well, at the time there wasn't a lot of selection, uh, but they were known for having a decent customer service and it was a really pretty laser. <laughs> Frankly, I liked the way it looked. Uh, it came with a couple different varieties of ways that you could buy it, I think it still does. Um, and it was a 10 watt laser. And it, I think 20 watt was the max you could get at the time. Uh, and they weren't even that common. So, I decided I was going to get that Ortur Laser Master 3. And it was kind of a nightmare. Uh, it, but their customer service was pretty good at the time. And so I was able to get it fixed. But now it's not like that. Very difficult to get uh, Ortur Laser Master 3 fixed. Uh, their customer service, is, at least last I heard, was kind of MIA which has happened with a lot of lasers. But going back to that was my emotional decision because I like the way it looked mostly. <laughs> and you can go back and look at my videos about you know how it broke on me several times and it was kind of a nightmare. And it led me down this path of buying more lasers and you know, and then I go with Aetzer, right? And they're the best laser and they do so amazing and then at some point their customer service also disappears. So this is a common thread that happens a lot with uh, laser manufacturers. They will start out really, really great. And uh, you know, then it's like they become this big company or something and they just drop the customer service uh, and just try and sell things cheap. So you gotta factor that into what you're doing when, you, when it comes to buying a laser. Now let's get to a CO2 versus diode. Obviously one of the first questions you're going to ask is what do I want to use it for? Like, why am I getting this thing? 
And, you know, you buy a computer, you buy a lot of things. It's like your first thought is, okay, what am I going to use it for? Is this just a hobby? Do I think that maybe it's going to be a business at some point? Or is, do you know that you just want to do a lot of engraving or things like that, right? Uh, do you know you want to do acrylic? Uh, so that lots of questions that you want to ask. And obviously, one of the big questions you're going to ask is, what is your budget? Uh, if you want to spend $500, well, obviously, uh, CO2 laser is not what you're going to be looking for, <laughs> you know, and that is a major consideration. But again, let's go down the basics. Uh, anything between $500 and $2,000, you're probably going to be in the diode laser range. Can you get a CO2 laser for cheaper than that? You probably can, but not really, and I would definitely would not do it. I think the least expensive uh, diode laser on the market right now is the Monport Onyx. And it goes on sale now and again, get it for about $2,000, but it's not the end of the story. And I've done several videos lately about the Monport Onyx. Uh, I love it. It's doing everything I want. I'm able to do acrylic now, but it's a $2,500 purchase. You know, you're going to spend $2,000 or so on the laser, and then you're going to need to do some upgrades. Uh, and I show those in the video. It's not going to come perfect out of the box. You're probably going to have, well, I, I've never heard of one that came perfect out of the box. Uh, you know, first thing you're going to do is check your lens. You know, these kinds of things. It's not like a plug and play. Whereas if you just saw my video on the Sculpt Fun, uh, that thing, that 40 watt laser, perfect out of the box. Super easy to set up. You don't have to buy anything extra, it, you know, other than you, your honeycomb bed, your enclosure, just your basic things. But it's just gonna work. It's gonna be way easier to use and, uh, you know, like easier to set up, easier to use, way fewer things to go wrong, way fewer things to replace. I mean, for most people, in my opinion, a diode laser is just the way to go. It, you will have equal power. You can have equal power in a diode laser than a CO2 laser. My uh, 70 watt, well, you get a 60 or 70 watt uh, diode laser it's definitely equal to what I can do on my Monport Onyx or a Polar or a G Wiki Cloud or your X Tool P2 they're all basically around the same cutting power uh, and for a lower price you can pick up a 70 watt uh, Atom Stack which I'll have a link down below for that too if you really just want to do a lot of cutting then that is going to be a beast. <laughs> You're going to get a bigger working area than you get with a lot of these uh, desktop CO2 lasers. So you're getting more bang for your buck if you don't want to do acrylic. But say you're thinking, hey, I'm going to start a business and uh, I do want to cut acrylic, but I don't need to do it immediately. Or maybe even the next year because you're just starting. You know, you're going to need a good year of learning and there's so much you can do with a diode laser. You can just do so much uh, that it's almost endless. And that's kind of how my journey has been for the past couple of years because I've been working on diode lasers and it's been wonderful. And there's so much you could do. Uh, the, it just came a time where I had a lot of orders coming in in acrylic and it just made sense for me. But I understand light burn to a good degree. I understand lasers to a good degree. So it may be best just to get a diode laser for the first year or two until you're ready. And then maybe you get a desktop, maybe you expand to a little workshop and you can get a full size laser. Hey, when it comes to CO2 lasers, uh, the the desktops, in my opinion, are not as good as your full-size laser. Obviously, you're getting a bigger bed size. It's easier to work on. Uh, a lot more choice. It's just better out of the box. 
and really you get more for your bang, bang for your buck. The reason why I went with a desktop laser is because I want to work from home. And I literally want to work from my living room, <laughs> you know, and I want it all done there. And then I want to just take off and go to the beach. I don't want to have to deal with all the overhead of having an office and employees and all these other things. I want to just be able to be creative, go to the beach, work from home, you know, and it all worked out for me and I need to do acrylic. So it's a, it's a very narrow use case. And that is for me, but you don't need to know that right away. You know, you can do everything that you need to do on a 40 watt. You can do all of the stuff I do, all of the files, I'll link below, of course, for all of this stuff, everything that I mentioned. But you could do everything that is on my files that you can see at Etsy, and that's what I actually sell. You could do all of them on the Sculpt Fun 40 watt for you know, a less than a thousand dollar laser. So, you know, I mean, it's less than a grand, you're done. You like have the enclosure, you have the honeycomb bed, you have everything you need. Uh, and that'll get you by learning for the first year. I really, you getting that I actually really like that laser quite a bit, uh, mainly for the price. I mean, if you can get it for, uh, my link below, now right now it's not on sale for $850, but my link they gave me will actually take the $200 off and make it like $850. And for me, that's like the best deal going on right now. Uh, and uh, if I was just starting off making a rational decision, I would probably go with that if you're just starting off. You know, because it'll do everything you want and you can just learn over time. And once you get perfect at light burn and not perfect, nobody is, but once you learn the basics and you're able to make your own files and you're selling a lot and then you need to upgrade. Well, you know what? The prices will have gone down. Uh, the laser power will have gone up and you'll be able to make a better decision. Now, if you want to go with an all-in-one and something that's probably more reliable, best customer service, everything, your next step up, Rolly Lasermatic, uh, you know, 30 watt, 3010, you're going to do great engraving. That's the one thing about the Sculpt Fun. It's a, it's a really great laser, but your engraving isn't quite uh, as tight as it is on the Rolly Lasermatic, so you're getting really good there, but you're paying more money. You know, you're probably going to pay, what, about fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. Uh, link below, of course, for that, too, uh, for all of these. So I have affiliates for all of them. I don't have to pick any particular laser because, yeah, I have a link for X-Tool. I have a link for Longer. I have a link for Acer. I have a link for, you know, come on. But I'm not mentioning those because I don't actually recommend them for most people. Uh, I think that that's just my own personal opinion, I guess. <laughs> this whole thing is but it's after experience i had an x tool s1 i thought it was great you can watch my video on it but for the price could i really recommend it over something else and that, that gets really tough because then you're learning xcs right they have a pr proprietary software and you're going to learn that and then all of a sudden you know you're going to find a way you're going to want to use the co2 laser and you're going to be switching the light burn so once you learn light burn, uh, you really can move to any laser, up $50,000 laser, you can still be using light burn. And I think that's one of the benefits over that over X-Tool. Now X-Tool will work on a light burn, but not perfectly. Uh, it, it worked so much better in their own software, at least the one that I had. So, which is great. You know, if you know you're just going to get one for hanging out at home uh, and you know you this is the only kind you're gonna get is X tool then uh, that's probably a good way to go so I'm not bashing X tool I'm just trying to make a good decision for you uh, and so I guess the bottom line is what I'm saying here is for most people out there you're probably gonna get a diode laser if you, unless you are ramped up to the point where you're like, you know what, I really need a CO2 laser, then that's when you make the decision. And by then, you're probably not watching this video. 
<laughs> right? So uh, diode lasers have come so far and uh, they're so powerful and so good right now and so simple and so easy to set up that it just makes them the superior choice in most cases in my opinion. Uh, uh, even though I personally have a CO2 laser. And to me, that makes perfect sense of why I would do that. And it's and to the point when that point comes for you, then you'll be ready. But uh, I guess that's my kind of basic thoughts. I hope that it helped you. I mean, this video is for you, and it is to try and help you make a right decision. And uh, there's other things, you know, hey, what if you're doing mostly engraving metal or something and you're gonna need a fiber laser? There are different reasons to have other types of lasers. Uh, but I'm not going into that right now. This is diode versus or, or a CO2 laser. A lot of people are trying to figure out, should I get a diode? Should I get a CO2? And I just wanted to kind of throw my thoughts out there or what came to mind. Obviously, there's way, way, way more to this, and I'm forgetting, I'm sure, a lot. Um, but leave a comment down below if I forgot something or you had a question that I didn't answer. Maybe I can make a video on that. And uh, again, links for everything in the description if you just want to go through each one and kind of check it out, see what's on sale. And these are, I'm not going to put anything in the description that I don't personally recommend. And so you can figure I've either tried it or I've looked into it enough to where I say, okay, this is, uh, this is something I can recommend. And uh, hopefully I'll have a video on it so that you can, I pretty much have a video on all of them, so that you can look into it more and make a rational decision and just don't buy it because it looks cool. <laughs> all right? Uh, all right. I, I hope I helped somebody out there. All right. All right. See you in the next one. Love y'all.